people. I'm not going back and forth with a man who thinks that they should be in my position. If you want to be in my position, get in my position. Do you believe that? Bluff City Media presents The Anthony Sane Show on YouTube at Bluff City Media. Stepping up to the microphone is your host, Anthony Sane. Acknowledge me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Anthony Sane Show. Of course, this is your host, Anthony Sane, here live in the Bluff City Media Studios, Kenny Stubblefield behind the glass. Kenny, what's going on, my brother? My brother. It's been a day, man. Man, it's been a day for sure, man. A lot going on. Got a lot of stuff going on. In my day, you as well. Yeah, man, the weather is all over the place for sure, but it, it is a good day here in the city of Memphis, man. We've got a uh, longtime advocate for the city of Memphis and, and University of Memphis Sports. Sandy Adams is joining us today. She's the vice president of the Rebounders organization, Memphis Rebounders. Uh, she's going to join us for the sit-down with Sane, talk about that. She's also a very talented podcaster. She is the host of the Fifth Quarter Podcast, a show dedicated to uh, uh, speaking with, with, with former athletes and just life after sports. And I think that's, uh, she has some very in-depth conversations there, very good dialogue she has on that show. Uh, she's going to join us for the sit-down with Sane, talk about the Rebounders, talk about that, as well as other things. Uh, I know she's also a big advocate for women's sports. Uh, so I definitely want to sit down and have a great conversation with her today. Also join us will be Shamaria Wiseman. Shamaria, one of the up-and-coming journalists here in the city of Memphis, up-and-coming content creators. Uh, she's the host of Mario Knows Best, also a member of Asylum Media Group. She's going to join us. She's going to do the three-pointer with us, man. We're going to talk about a couple things going on in the world of sports, including some things, uh, including women's basketball uh, for sure. Uh, but, Kenny, since the last time we talked, the Memphis Grizzlies uh, played the – Milwaukee Bucks last night, and they won. It was not on my bingo card that the Grizzlies would win both games against the Milwaukee Bucks, especially <laughs> not this year, you know. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., last two games, 40 points, 35 points. And I'm willing to bet, Kenny, that by the time we're done recording this show, uh, you know that the, 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 um, the um, injury report comes out, you know, <laughs> later on today. I'm willing, I'm willing to bet you, Kenny Stubblefield, that we'll, we'll see something that says that Jaron Jackson Jr. would not be playing yeah. the next game <laughs> or the game after that. <laughs> or the, or game, the game after, after that. that. How uh, many more games they got left? Uh, I think they got five. And Jaron hit 65 the other night. Yeah, we good, Yeah, man. Jaron's done so. <laughs> shout good, out man. to Jaron. I don't think you're going to see him play again. Shout out to Jaron. Seriously, Listen, though. Yep. Shout out to him for holding this shit down for this entire mm -hmm. year. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Because, um, you know, it's been a tough year. And I remember when Jaron's biggest knock was health. Like, you know, he can't stay on the He's, he's, without a doubt, been the most durable player on this team. And over the last few years, Jaron has been super uh, durable as well, man. So shout out to Jaron. If you want to take the next five off, bro, you deserve it. Go try to get that NBA all-NBA second team, man. I ain't mad at you at all. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks, I am concerned with them. Two straight losses. Damn. Uh, consecutive games. Uh, Something is off with that team, man. Yeah, no, it's not nothing is off. It's a three-letter word, but it ain't off. The word is old. <laughs> that team is old, man. And they're not... Add them to the pile with the Phoenix Suns. Add them to the pile with uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. Add them to the pile with the Golden State Warriors. They're a team who you're expecting guys who you grew up being, you know, you knew that, that have been part of these teams, especially your role players, who just don't have it anymore, man. Like that 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 Bucks team, no, they're just not that good. And then you fire a coach who got you a championship. You bring in a first-year coach. You fire him for Doc Rivers, who's a clown. And I, I, don't, I can't say much about Doc Rivers. I don't know what the record has been since he's been there. But I know it's included two losses to this Grizzlies team. <laughs> so right. that should mean something. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, another bright point that I will definitely pull from that game is Brandon Clark. Another big game for him, Man. 15 points. I want to say he had seven or eight rebounds off the board. Brandon Clark looks like nothing happened. Looks like he just said, "Man, screw basketball for a minute. It didn't look like he had, had any injury at all. He's, he looks like Brandon Clark. And I think that's something that the Grizzlies, going forward, it can definitely be um, something you can have in your back pocket to, to see Brandon Clark playing on the level that he's playing on. Uh, offensively and de defensively, he's been good. He's been able to get to his spots. His jump shot even looks a little smoother. And seeing those closing lineups with him and Jaron, man, uh, something we thought we'd never see again. Has what you've seen out of him over these last few games, has it changed any of the yes. calculus at all yes. for what they're going to do? Yes. Yeah. Um. I'm kind of, I've always been saying go draft whatever because you can go sign any, you know, pretty affordable. There's a lot of affordable bigs that are going to be coming out this summer. I've always said just go draft whatever. But I literally want to say go draft whatever now because uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., Brandon Clark, 
Closing lineup definitely could work. With and a starting Gigi. lineup could work as well. Because, yeah, that's that's another thing too, man. They've got so much versatility <sighs> because even if even if a Jaron Jackson Jr. Brandon Clark lineup don't work, starting the game, a Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, Gigi Jackson lineup looks good too. See, here's there's a misnomer I think about we, we always talk about death lineups, right? Mm-hmm. Golden State kind of started that whole thing. I think there's been more death mm-hmm. lineups, but Golden State, they started the initial, like, this is mm-hmm. their death lineup. Right. They didn't start with that death lineup. That, that death lineup didn't start for no, them. They closed games. They closed them. games with And then, that. like, that third quarter, they put they threw it out there. And they just they would throw it out there. It. They would put yeah. it out. They would put you out. Yeah. They'd put that death lineup out there, and there was yeah. nothing you can do. That's... Like so, when we talk about this this lineup, there's several versions of it. Several versions right. of it, and mm-hmm. it might not be your starters. Yeah, and that's okay. And the Grizzlies can really throw out a defensive send you to hell lineup that could be Marcus Smart, Vince Williams Jr. at the two, Gigi at the three, Brandon Clark at the four, Jaren at the five, and you just won't score. What are you gonna, <laughs> what are you gonna do? How are you gonna? <laughs> right. They can switch. They can switch everything. Uh huh. Yeah. You could you could do that. And it could get it could get scary hours for sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, other news uh, before we bring up Sandy is the Tigers got your boy P- PJ Haggerty. We may talk about him later on today. I told you I don't want to hear nothing <laughs> I'm about not these talking dudes. About nothing. But I'm just excited that Penny just came out swinging, came out firing, and got a big time recruit. Um, I got it, a question to ask. Yeah, you. go ahead. Well, did you see the candles? Yeah, I gotta give me one of them, man. What you think about that? <laughs> I gotta just get, go give me one. Just okay. give me the link to it. I got you. I need that. I need that right here on my shoulder, man. I, I need mean, that. That man is selling can- that man is selling candles, bro. Hey, I love it. He ain't playing with y'all. Hey, you see this? Hold on. You see this right here? Yes. Yeah. I need one right there. Yeah. Penny Hardaway. Hold on. So hard right to there. do. There you go. There you go. Right there. I need it right there. For Put sure. It right there. Yeah, man. I tell you what. We're about to take a break, man. When we come back, Sandy Adams, Memphis Rebounders, the Fifth Quarter Podcast. She's about to join us next on the Anthony Sane Show. See you guys in a minute. You know, you can't use NIL as a uh, recruiting tool. Like when I go on X and I read a story about USC and how they're pouring a bunch of money into NIL, isn't that in turn, like that story being out there and the chance of a recruit reading that, isn't that using NIL we're almost to re- Like I know it's like back channel and a little different than literally saying, hey, we're going to give you $6 right. million when you step on campus. But it's the same. But thing. it's the same idea. And I think in any open market, free market, you know, business, whatever model you're in, why the hell would I commit to somewhere without knowing how much I'm going to make? Somebody I saw suggest multi-year contracts with the NIL collective, right? If you end up opting out of that contract and going elsewhere in the transfer portal, this is a contract where you'd have to pay 50% back of what you've already made. Good luck Now, I think that. the issue then and runs is you're going there, Kenny. What top-level recruit is in his right mind going to sign that shit? That's fair. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Jalen Nichols, SEC tackle. Supposedly he was going to be a starter last year. He said exactly what you would expect of an SEC tackle. Big, wide body, solid frame kit, incredibly strong. Mario Anderson, Miller, South Carolina. We got a little pipeline to the Gamecocks. Good addition to a solid running back room. A guy that will fight, will strain. I mean, you got to love that, right? We might see a, a beast of a offensive line this year. Yeah, and I'm not uh, – I will say, you know, having lost um, likes. Um, pounders. Pounders. Um, Y'all's boy. Who should not be named. Davion Carter. I mean, I, I was worried about offensive line, and now, like, I know it's only one report, and it's from Noah Franklin as a strength coach for, like, probably yeah, what I'm at. This might, be our, this might be our best offensive line. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel.
All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. Time for the sit down with Sane. We have a very special guest today, Sandy Adams, Vice President of Memphis Rebounders. You probably know her from the Fifth Quarter podcast as well. She's an awesome individual, big time Memphis Tiger basketball supporter, big time podcaster. Brought her on today. We're going to talk a little Tiger basketball. We're going to talk about the fifth quarter. We're going to talk about <laughs> Memphis rebounders. Yes. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff you got going on. I'm trying not to cuss, Ken. I just feel like I just feel like I don't need to be cussing today. Yeah, Ken. man, you, you know might want to keep You're it fine. keep <laughs> it low key, keep it tightened up a little bit. Let's, yeah, man, let's, let's act I can't be. I can't just cuss right there about to come up here, man. I so I'm gonna I'm I'm keep it a little PG today for sure. I want to say shit real bad, but I'm a, I'm gonna say it, Ken. Miss Sandy, I apologize. Yeah. I don't know why he no. Yeah, I can't I can't do right, man. You know I can't. Well, Sandy, like I said, you are the vice president of the Memphis Rebounders. I kind of have an idea of what the Rebounders are. I want to bring you on because what I see visually from the Rebounders seems like something I can really get behind, and I'm going to tell you why. I get a lot of criticism from Tiger fans, right, because I've, right. Had, I've had some some takes that if, – if, if, I'm not going to say controversial, but I've said things like in order for Tiger basketball to really go where it needs to go, as far as a fan base are concerned, it needs more diversity, it needs more youth, all these type of things. When I look at you guys from the outside looking in, I see a very diverse group of people. I see, I see people that I know for sure. Like I know these people personally. Right, like, I, right. I, you know what I mean? I know them. Right. I know. I see people who looks like they have. They make nice money. I see working class people there. Uh, all these different types of people there. So explain to me exactly what the rebounders are, what they do, and just. Um, how how someone like even myself could be a part of the organization? Okay, it's actually really easy to be a Memphis mm -hmm. rebounder. And the organization was founded in the 1960s by mm -hmm. like a super group of fans. Mm -hmm. But as the years have gone by, the organization has also changed to reflect that. Mm -hmm. And um, three or four years ago, when Penny uh, Coach Hardaway came to the university, Marvin White was tasked with the job of coming on as president. Harold Byrd, the mm -hmm. former president, had stepped down. He'd retired. And so uh, we had an opportunity to really, you know, push the organization forward. And we feel like we've done that. Uh, we've worked really hard to bring in all areas of people. So mm -hmm. we have families. We have single people. We have corporate sponsors. We have older people. We have all different types of fans that are a part of this, and it gives them an opportunity. It is a lore-based membership. Mm. You can become a rebounder for $150, and it gives you mm. opportunity to uh, participate with uh, our team events. So we have Happy Hour Hoops that kicks off the season in um, August and September, we have that. We have the Penny Hardaway Golf Classic. We do that. Mm -hmm. And the past two years, we also end the season with a big uh, event at uh, the Weston downtown across from FedEx Forum. So it's really easy. You know, we look at it as a way to network also. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, a lot of women that are members. We have, mm -hmm. um, as I said, a lot of families and corporate members. But I think if you're new to town and you want to find some place mm. to get involved with the with the city and find out more about it. The Rebounders is a great opportunity to do that. And we've actually had several people that have moved into the city that just signed up not knowing anybody and have really had a great experience with that. So it sounds like from what you're saying, you've got people who, of course, are either they're fans or they're interested in, in getting to lo know more about the team. Sure. But it's not like strictly for alumni or things like that. It can no. be anyone no. who can. It can be anyone, mm. and we even offer – uh, free memberships if you're a University of Memphis student. So they mm. actually can become members mm. for free. And so we have a lot of variety in there and just a lot of opportunity to do that. So if someone wants to be a uh, part of the Rebounders organization, how would they go about doing they that? They can go to our website at memphisrebounders.com mm. and click on the membership tab and pick whichever one you want. It's that, e good. It's that easy. Sounds good. Well, uh, of course we wanted the Tiger basketball season to last longer, but it's, it's definitely – Exciting times right now as well. You got transfer stuff. We got a guy who, you know, uh, committed today. We'll talk about that later in the show. Um, what is – what if you remember the rebounders, what does this time of year look like for you? Are, are, are anything special going on? Or are you just, you know, kind of a – how does – what does that look so like? So we've had our last event, which it was at um, the FAU game. We had mm -hmm. our big blow-up at, um, at um, 
Weston downtown. Mm -hmm. And that was a great event. And that was kind of our end of the season event. Uh, now we take a couple of months off, April and May, and then mm -hmm. we just start back as a board member. So there, I think there's seven or eight of us that are on the board. And then we plan out the events for next season. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of them, uh, we kind of already know what's going to happen. And some of them we have on our wish list of things to do. So that's kind of what we do. We've had a lot of members that have actually asked to have events in the summer, not to participate with the basketball team, but because they miss seeing each other. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's kind of like summer vacation. Everybody kind of goes away. But we have a lot of members that just miss getting in touch with the other members that they see at our events. Yeah, because I've seen pictures of you guys' events. I'm like, I've seen Coach Hardaway there. I've seen players mm -hmm. there. See a lot of fans. Yes. And it seems like a really cool social thing to do. Like, I see a lot of people seem like they're having fun. And it's like I said, it's, I know some of the people. Like, they're my age group. I'm like, man, this is pretty dope. Like, I could I could be a it part is. of this. You know what I mean? It is. So, yeah, get out there and be a part of the rebounders, man. Put, put your money where your mouth is. And if you ain't got no money, don't tell me you ain't got 150, man. You can you, you got 150. You can make it happen. You bought you bought the pair of right. whatever. You got them shoes and all that stuff. Yeah. For the I would like to say, you know, the first year I had just moved back from Texas and I joined just because mm -hmm. I wanted to get involved with the city right, again. Right. And I joined it and that was uh the year uh, I think it was three years ago, we had the conference tournament in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. I'd never been to a conference tournament. Mm -hmm. And I drove there by myself. I didn't really know anybody and get there. And I was already a part of the rebounders board. Right. I get there. I'm like 10 o'clock at night. I walk into the lobby of the mm -hmm. hotel and there's like a whole group of people sitting over to the side and they yell my name. And I'm like, are you talking to me? And they're like, yeah, we're talking mm -hmm. to you. And I go over there, and they knew me from the radio show because I was always at the radio show. Right. And they were rebounders also. And that was like four days of like the best time I've ever had. Just so many Memphis fans there, a lot of rebounders. It was just really a great opportunity. Well, that, that sounds – like I said, it looks cool. It sounds cool. For me it, to is talk cool. About. Yeah, it, it is cool. Yeah, it's like pretty cool stuff. Say, so, you, know, you know what I really would like to ask is a special request? I feel, <laughs> I feel like if you – I feel like you got enough clout, you can say – Anthony Sane is an honorary member of the rebound. I, I feel like you can make that happen. <laughs> Uh, for $150, sure. I can't, I can't, I can't get nothing, kid. You almost got it, man. I almost, almost I, had it, kid. I almost had almost it. Had or it. you can go back to school. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. Go back to school, no, I'm good. No, yeah. no, I'm, good. No, yeah. I'm, I'm a poor podcaster, saying I, I don't really, but you know, I'll start stacking my money out to the side. Like you said, I, if I can buy tennis shoes and all that type of stuff, I can spend, like I that, just said. That's can, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you, you're exactly right. Uh, the Fifth Quarter, that's your podcast. That's my podcast. Tell us more about that. So it's a podcast that Michael Wilson and I started mm -hmm. back last summer. Uh, he was former Tiger, if you guys don't know, which you should know, and former Harlem Globetrotter. Um, he lives in D.C., and he reached out to me. We'd met a couple of times at some events, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, I have this idea about starting a podcast, you know, talking about athletes, former athletes and how hard it is once they leave their sport, whether mm -hmm. it's by their own choice or not. Uh, and he had talked about during the pandemic, a lot of his Harlem Globetrotter friends, they all got together mm -hmm. in these Zoom calls and they talked about how hard it was to transition after they left their sport. Mm -hmm. And he said, I just think that would be a really great opportunity. And he had a lot of his friends who were former athletes that were wanting to talk about it. And so you know, at first I'm like, I didn't play sports. Why is anybody going to want to talk to me? Mm -hmm. But I have taught job search and career strategy. And so it really fell into line with the whole concept. And so we started it and it was a great, um, it just took off like crazy. We obviously started it with a lot of Memphis, former Memphis athletes. Mm -hmm. I know people ask me all the time, they're like, you know, is this just Memphis? I'm like, no, it's not. But we started it off with Memphis because we thought, you know, I live here and we wanted the fan base here to kind of get behind it. Mm -hmm. Michael did the first interview and the second one we had William Bedford on, and that's probably my favorite one to date. Um, I just recorded episode number 38. Uh, 36 have been out. Um, and then back in Thanksgiving, Michael had to take a step back because of his mm -hmm. schedule. And it's hard when you have a family, a full-time job, it's hard to have to, you know, schedule something as we try mm. to put one out every week. So I just took it over because I do have that time. Yeah. Uh, it's been kind of hard, but I absolutely love it. That's um, definitely something a lot of people don't think about. And once these guys' playing days are over, even right. at the coll collegiate level, when their time is up, they have to start thinking about what's life after basketball look like. 
And I, I, right. I appreciate a show like what you yeah. have to kind of shine light on those type of things. And it made me think about the next question I have for you. As a fan base, I know that uh, everyone is part of Rebounders are fans, right? Right. So in the, in the climate we're in now where guys are basically one and done almost in college, right, is, is the attachment level that you have to players, of course it's different, but describe what that's like when you when you get, you know, seven, eight new guys every year and are really good in most cases, and these guys are gone. Do you still have that level of, t- of attachment? Of course it's different, but what is it like now? It is guys? different. I mean, I was here in the 90s, and mm-hmm. to me that's the – I have to say it. I mean, that's the, the era I kind of grew mm-hmm. up in, and that was my favorite. But I think these days, you know – we have an opportunity, I think the fan base do, the rebounders and, and other mm-hmm. organizations to get in and get to know these players as much as possible, right. as much as, you know, you can get to know somebody. Right. Um, I think that with the transfer portal and everything, it's just a new realm of of athletes and it's just a new way of doing business. Mm-hmm. And I never really get to attach to any of the players just because – they could leave anyway, you right. know, they could declare for the draft or, mm-hmm. you know, God forbid somebody get hurt. But I think that I just, my approach is, and I can only speak for myself. My mm-hmm. approach is I enjoy every minute and I don't get upset. I don't get, you know, disappointed or anything like that. I just mm-hmm. enjoy it for what it is. And, you know, I lived in Houston for 16 years. I didn't get to watch Tiger basketball. Mm-hmm. I only got to see the Tigers play when they came to Houston every two mm-hmm. years. Right. So for me, I am I feel blessed that I get to watch them. Mm-hmm. So I go to every game, I go to the exhibitions, and I just appreciate the time that we have with them. We we talked off the air, and I was talking about um, we were talking about Coach Hardaway, right? And I've I've had these type of discussions with people all the time, and I let people know, like, the thing about Penny is no matter what you say about him, he has he's he's from here. And this is his dream job. We know Penny's not going to leave to go somewhere else, right? How important do you think that that is in the whole scheme of ultimately making this a national championship team, right? When you've got a guy who you know is going hard for the city, he's going hard for the fan base, and he he's 100% sold out on making this the best program he can make it. How important do you think those factors come in as far as is, is how we view Penny as, as our coach? I think we're blessed to have Coach Hardaway as, mm-hmm. our, as our coach. Um, and that's really all I have to say about yeah. it. I be mean, trying to tell these bums, Sandy. I, mean, I try to guide people to the light, Sandy. But, you know, you can you can lead a horse to water, but, you know, you know the rest. You know what I'm saying? But, I think we're blessed. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a, he's a good guy. And he's and he's a guy who, like I said, we're – we're he's here and, and he's do, he's doing a good job. He's – He's, he's got winning teams. He's, he's getting to the tournament, those type of things. This was not the season we wanted the season to be. I mean, but that's fine. He'll 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 get it where it's supposed to be. He's got the tools. I have faith in Coach yeah. Hardaway. Yeah, we all do. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sandy. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you for having my back. These guys, these other guys, I, I, no, I ain't going to get into it. But no, <laughs> but no um, you've got other things that you do that are pretty awesome, too. I know you're a photographer. Yes. I know you take speaking engagements. Tell us more about that. So I'm a career strategist and a brand strategist and a speaker. Uh, I do have, obviously, the podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't do as much photography as I did in mm-hmm. Houston. I was a portrait photographer, photographer full-time there. Uh, I do it occasionally now. My my biggest thing for the photography is I've been a 24-year volunteer with the Heart Association. Mm-hmm. My mom um, had a 20-year battle, and she passed away in 2016. So that is something that really means a lot to me. So every January, mm-hmm. I photograph the Women of Impact um, and for the Heart Association here, and I, I did that in Houston as well. Mm-hmm. So that's something that means a lot to me. But I love uh, career coaching. I love uh, doing any type of personal brand strategy. Like right now, I have uh, an AAU baseball team out of Connecticut, mm, okay. CT Mayhem. Okay. And I uh, do all their social media. I just designed a website for them. Uh, and that really goes into, you know, just being able to put themselves forward so that they can take their ba- brand mm. and build their organization uh, to a, b- a bigger uh, stage. Yeah. So that's that. And I've worked with over 4,000 professionals with career coaching, and that's something that I just really am passionate about. This was up. Well, saying I know something else that I've noticed that you're passionate about. It's not just men's Tiger basketball, but women's Tiger basketball <laughs> as well, and, and also just women's sports in general. Yes. And I've seen some of your takes on Twitter. 
how you were saying that uh, the women's sports should be covered it did. more intentionally than it, is, than it is now. What do you think are some of the, the hurdles for that? And how do you think just even locally that could be done better? Um, granted, I don't work for a media outlet. Mm-hmm. I understand that, or I guess I've been told that the media covers what the sponsors will pay for. So mm. they want to cover men's yeah. sports. They want to cover men's basketball and men's football. And I'm saying that generally speaking. My motto is, if you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of companies that are run by women. And I think that if we put as much focus into women's sports, maybe they're not as exciting to everybody. Mm. But if you're just talking to the same people every day, how do you know what the other people want? You have an opportunity to get other subscribers, other listeners, other people that are watching. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to find out that Maddie G is going overseas. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that anywhere in the news. But yet everybody is stumbling over themselves every day to talk about everybody in the portal. Where's everybody going to go? What's the strategy here? Mm. What's what's all the team dynamics? What if we did these three or four people? What happens then? Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Nobody's talking about Memphis women's basketball. Who's in the portal? Who's going to come? Right. Who are they looking at? What do they need? And they got a good thing going over there. They do. Sure. Yeah. They do. I did an entire podcast segment with every one of those coaches last fall because I didn't see anyone paying attention. Now, granted, I know people are kind of pop back up and say, well, we covered the soccer team when they won, but did you cover them every single time? Mm -hmm. You know, what I see is that people only, and I'm I'm generalizing and I know I'm going to get some heat for this, but this is, is but this is from Mm -hmm. my perspective. You know, what I see is we only pay attention when it's something really big. But what about all these little girls mm-hmm. in the city? Do you have you have kids? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a girl or boy? I have one of each. Okay. Mm-hmm. And my daughter was an athlete too. Okay, so you know we have all of these girls growing up, and they should be able to see mm-hmm. people like them in the news, and also providing the news. Like it should yes. be. Yes. Yeah. Yes, um, Jessica Benson. Right. She does sports. Mm-hmm. Who are the other sports? people in, in, um, in the city being honest jessica's about it as far mm-hmm. as it, as far as who you can see because i talk about that like as being a black man like i grew up with jarvis Greer, right. you know what i mean jason smith right doc holiday these type of guys who i i watched and i idolize are now my friends and mentors you know what i mean so but for young ladies there just aren't there aren't yeah. Yeah. you know and i remember what it was like me growing up I, you know who were the the female figures for me to look up to mm. And there weren't a lot of them at that time. Right. And so, you know, I just wish that I understand that sponsors pay the bills. I do get that. But I know several female owned companies. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. And we talk about stuff that ain't got nothing to do with nothing a lot uh, yeah. on the radio and newspaper I mean, too. Yeah. So, yeah. so for me during the summer, what do I do? I don't really pay attention to sports mm. because it's the same old thing. It's just right. a broken record. Mm. I agree. I definitely feel like something has to happen. I know here at, at Bluff City Media, we're trying to find ways to, you know, be more innovative about those type of things. So, I yeah, mean, hopefully I so. try really hard. You know, I, whoops, I've made it. Uh, I've made it a point to when we started our podcast, we had probably the first five or six people were all men. Mm-hmm. And Michael and I talked about that. And I said, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities for women to go pro. And mm. what we've realized is that in high school and college, the coaches are preparing the women mm. for another career already. Right. It's a given that they're not going to go pro. Mm-hmm. But what I said was there are all these women with stories. And I met the women's, um, the new staff for the women's team. I met them right. at a private dinner in, I think, August. And I met them and they're like, you know, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I have a podcast. And they're like, oh, my God, what's it about? And I told them. They all wanted to come on and share their stories. Mm. And so I, you know, I felt that that was really important to, to have a voice for all these people. I can't talk about college athletes because I'm a booster. I can't talk about high school athletes because mm. I'm a booster. Not in that way. I can share people's stories that have already gone through and been retired. Yeah. 
But I just think that there's an opportunity if people look hard enough and go out there and ask companies that they've never had be sponsors if they're interested in yeah. it. Yes, I had that. Um, and this this show is is a little different. The way the way we generate funds is a little different here. And I had I had a conversation with you when you were asking how I got into this, and I kind of mm-hmm. gave you my timeline, right? right? And I, I worked for a company. I'm not going to say the company's <laughs> name. But I worked for a company that told me that uh, we can't sell your show. Like, we can't sell your show. And I was like, yeah, because I, I, I'm sure you can't because you're reaching out to this people. audience. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, that's people. not my audience. Right. You know what I mean? So you're, you're, I, I agree with you. You can't because you're not trying to. You don't have the capability to do those type of things. Or you're not looking hard enough. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah. or, or the people that you have in charge of selling this show aren't the people that need to be in charge right. of selling this show. Which is I'm all, probably going to get a lot of heat for this. Oh, you'll be but, fine. But get I it mean, off. And, and I'm not on Twitter, you know, talking, but I mm-hmm. got really... I got mad the other day, and all I said was, where are all the stories? Because my Twitter feed is all about the the men's team, the right. men's portal, and, and everybody going into that. And I'm like, where are the stories? And Coach Simmons is probably glad no one's talking about her because she <laughs> right. doesn't have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, where are the stories about, you know, I know that high school basketball gets covered, but where are the stories about – all the other women athletes mm. in the city. There have to be stories. Right. right. I definitely agree. Something something definitely has to Maybe they're not David Jones, you know, level yeah. stories, but there have to be stories. Because that team that team, especially over the last couple of years, last two or three years really, has really been making strides. You know what I mean? So yeah. it seems like yeah. yeah. Seems like it be it should be something going down with it for sure. But Sandy, like I said, you've got uh the Memphis Rebounders, be a part of it, man. It's great. Great opportunity to support the team. That's right. Build community within fans. Meet awesome people like Sandy, other people that are really awesome in the city of Memphis. It's a real who's who, like really cool people that I've seen. It is. A lot of I, stuff you, you know, guys put out. It, it's strange because it's not strange. So last year uh, on my birthday, we all go to the radio show, and it just happened to fall on the – the night we had our show mm. and they all surprised me. I looked around the room and all of these people I didn't know three years ago mm. and they've all become like really, really good friends. And so it is a family. If you come out yeah. and you're always going to be made, made welcome and it's just a lot of fun. So Memphis rebounders.com. Yeah. Check it out. You might see me in. I might throw my 150 down, pull up in there. Joe. For sure. I might just pull up, see what happens. <laughs> I know Jeff Brightwell. <laughs> Jeff Brightwell is a member. Yeah, I know Jeff. Mm-hmm. That's my guy. Yeah. So if you can't get me in the doors, he probably can't either, though. So, but yeah, we're going to leave that alone, though. We're about to take a break, man, when we come back. Make sure you check it out, though. Check it out. MemphisRebounders.com. Check it That's out. Right. My uh, my good friend, Sandy Adams here, Vice President of the Rebounders, the Fifth Quarter Podcast, a podcast bringing awareness to life after sports for local athletes, or is it? Any athlete. Any athlete. Check it out. Any great athletes. show. Great show. Great conversation. Link for the podcast will be in the description below. Yeah. So it'll be fifth on the quarter screen. podcast link will be in the in the description below. There it is for sure. For sure. Sandy Adams. Show some love to her. About to go to break. When we come back, it's going to be the three-pointer here on Anthony the Same Show. See you guys in a minute. You see a guy like that with the 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 ability to be as fleet of foot as he is. Right. He doesn't run the floor great, but that's not really what you have to do in an NFL situation right. at offensive tackle. But you see his feet, you see his size, you see his strength. I think most guys look at that like frame and they're like left tackle. NFL. And yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and most NFL coaches, we've seen this in the past. They have a lot of uh, of of pride in their ability to develop. Yes. I think most guys say, give me a summer with that kid and let's get him at left tackle. No, he doesn't run the floor like some premier gazelle big. No. But that's not – you're working in short areas yes. to be a tackle in the NFL, and he's shown in short areas <laughs> that he's got hey, sweet footwork for his, his size. His spin move is kind of nasty. It is. It is. It's nasty. No. And honestly, and you tell me how far-fetched this is, if I was him – that's what I would do. Tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel.
Do you guys think that we check every box for a playoff team? I don't know what all the boxes are. I don't know what college football budges boxes are. But let's say there were 12, we'll go with 12 teams. There were 12 boxes. I don't know what they are. Do we seriously check every one of them? No. The, I mean, and I don't, surely we're at like 11 out of 12 or 10 out of 12. I don't know how you can say you check the defensive box, whatever the defensive box is, I mean, because it's, it's such a mist. Right? Yeah, like you can't even, I don't even think you can fill that box in yet. Well, it's then maybe like, that's not a box he's talking about. What are the boxes to be a... How is it the whole defensive side of the ball not a well, box? Number. Secondary is a mystery. You've got a lot of guys who are replacing their uh, linebackers. Jeff, gone. Like yeah. you just got Chandler back. Yeah. Um. You have high hopes for Mackey, but like, what's his role? Is he going to be Jalen's replacement? Is he going to be an actual stand-up like linebacker? Like, what 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 role is he going to play? Tune in to Tigers Untapped with T.J. Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. Time for the three-pointer. Got my homie with me, man, Shamaria Wiseman. Let's go. Man, it's been a Mario minute. Mario knows, man. It's, it's, it's been too long, actually, man. It's been too man. long. It's been, too it long. been forever. Last time she was here, she, she had some, some, some strong Woo! takes, man. It, this, this is the take monster right here, man. From what I understand, it ain't gotten any <laughs> better. Nah, it ain't got no better, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to share none, because I don't feel like arguing with you schmoes mm. in, in the comments, man. Check her out, and you go, go, you go. Yeah, go check her. Go check her out. Well, Shamari, we're gonna start off like this. We just had uh, Sandy Adams on the show, mm -hmm. uh, vice president of the Memphis Rebounders, and she made some strong comments about the lack of, of women's coverage, right? And uh, which is which is uh, interesting because women's sports are definitely on the rise as far as yeah. basketball is concerned, right? You've got Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, mm -hmm. Juju, who you feel like is gonna be. Whatever Kaylin is, you feel like Juju may be even better than her, which mm -hmm, is scary, right? Mm -hmm. So all these things are ahead. Uh, uh, you brought something to my attention. You were talking about you were trying, you were looking for a USC jersey. So I was like, oh, oh was. man, that was mm -hmm. a uh, that's a Bronny James jersey. So I looked it up, right? <laughs> it's like, no, that's that Bronny <laughs> numbers. This is just Juju Watkins lady or whatever. So mm -hmm. I'm like, crap, man, it was totally sold out. I was like, yeah, we're in we're in new territory, Kenny. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. Uh, we are in absolutely yeah. new territory, and I freaking love it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm going I'm to start off there. Uh, do you have any thoughts about what she was saying, first of all? Because you were here while she was getting interviewed. I think more so, uh, you know, with these outside of the city of Memphis, mm -hmm. you know, you, you do have these names that are appearing on the scene and it's getting bigger and bigger um, because, you know, I don't want to say the game is completely changing, but we're kind of seeing something um, in these players that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it's peaking. It's people are interested. So we're going in terms of that. Uh, but inside the city of Memphis, I would agree with her with the mm -hmm. point on uh, women's sports not getting the coverage that it deserves. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. um, and news that is, of course, national news, Angel Reese is declaring for the WNBA draft. She's had some, some strong things to say. Um, and people... And there's been a lot of commentary about the whole thing. Yes. And there are people saying things like, you know, maybe she should stay in college because there may be more money there. And she's kind of she's created her own villainy or whatever. And people are saying she's kind of like a Draymond Green type player, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? And my thing is, I would go to the WNBA because there's just so many things that just kind of come with college sports, right? Like we that's a conversation I have all the time as far as fan backlash and just some of the things, the loaded comments that people make. What are your thoughts on her going to the WNBA? And how much it, how much do you feel like her decision is, I just want to get away from college sports, man. I had a great time. I won a championship here, all those type of things. How much do you think that she feels like, if I go to the, to the WNBA, it'll be a much more... It'll be a different environment. Yeah, as far yeah. How much well, how much do you think that plays in her decision? Okay, so originally uh, I was very surprised that Angel Reese did decide to declare for the draft because mm -hmm. I thought she would stay another year, not due to uh, the not due to outside sports things, but due mm -hmm. to like what she does on the basketball court because she does lack a certain skill set. But it is what it is. She'll get better over time. Mm -hmm. um, however, I do think that her decision to declare for the draft in terms of how the outside perceives her 
did factor into her mm -hmm. making that decision. Uh, with with college sports, it's everything open. But with the WNBA, there's a certain uh, image that they're trying to keep with these players. Mm -hmm. And right. I think that when she does go pro, it will that the WNBA will try to contain mm -hmm. that image because she's so villainized right now, in right. my opinion, in terms of the media, that they'll try to control that image that, you yeah. know, that was given to her in college. And, you know, she kind of wants... I know she's kind of she's embraced it, right. but you can see you saw the emotions in her post game interview of, of how it's getting to right. her. So I think that the WNBA will definitely mm -hmm. contain that image. And I think that's a right very now. good point you're making too, because they'll take the job of trying to come in and refine her because mm -hmm. she's a type of personality that could be one of the faces of of the WNBA right. going forward. Definitely. This renaissance of WNBA basketball is coming. She's definitely going to be one of the faces of it. Mm -hmm. So I think they'll work with her. They will. To, to to protect her, you know, to make that safe space for her. I think that's a very good point you make. Mm -hmm. Also, another interesting story, uh, I can't remember the publication that put it out, but an article came out about Don Staley, right? Coach mm -hmm. of uh, South Carolina. That's my squad. That's lie. my squad. Coach, coach, yeah. coach Staley, that's my girl. I mean, <laughs> I fool with Juju, Caitlin, mm -hmm. Angel, all that. Hey, but no, 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 no Gamecocks, though, I fool with Don yeah. Staley big time. Mm -hmm. Um She's made comments that I'm I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. We we share the same general faith, right? But yeah. her approach and the way she goes about things, I even roll my eyes at it because I'm like, okay, that's just not how I express my personal faith, right? What do you think about the people who say that what she's doing could possibly be alienating players on her team that may be of a different faith? Uh, I, like, I would agree with them if it wasn't for the fact that, like, these people that have played under uh, Coach Staley, mm -hmm. they just – think highly of her yeah and i don't think it I, like i can see why people would be upset you know pushing your religion on certain people isn't isn't mm -hmm. something that we should do uh, regardless of what you practice mm -hmm. but yeah i just can't get i can't get down with that that opinion simply because people speak highly of her all right. the time and i haven't seen her saying anything that particularly make, makes it feel like she's directly right. telling her players you exactly. need to do this or whatever she comes off kind of goofy to me doing it it's kind of <laughs> flaky to me but i don't think it's and I could, I mean, I could be absolutely wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. but it, ain't, it, it ain't a Mark Jackson type yeah, situation yeah, right. yeah. where he's taking Steph Curry to church and right, making exactly. him read it's books. Not, right. yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. that. Because me personally, I wouldn't do what she's doing, but I don't think it, it affects the entire team. It doesn't. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, number two, um, Tiger Basketball got a mm -hmm. big commitment today. Young man named uh, PJ, PJ Haggerty from uh, Tulsa. AAC, fresh new, newcomer of the year, whatever they call that award, freshman mm -hmm. of the year. Uh, big time score, uh, pinning in the AAC Avengers again uh, out there. Yeah. Going on. <laughs> Kenny, I said I didn't want to hear nothing about none of these dudes, <laughs> but here's a here's a moment, Kenny Stubblefield, <laughs> to tell me about <laughs> PJ Haggerty. Give right. me give, give me the rundown, the full rundown yeah. of PJ Haggerty, Kenny. I ain't saying shit because <laughs> <laughs> in about twelve months we don't know. <laughs> we'll know exactly what he is, what he is. I'll tell you what he did for Tulsa. I won't tell okay. you what he'll yeah. do for Memphis. I'll How's tell you that? what. Let me tell you this. Okay. I, whatever, whatever he is and whatever he can be, I think of nothing else. You can read the paper and find out what he is, or you can go check out Hitman Hoops and, and, uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Roman Cleary. Mm -hmm. You can follow those guys yeah. if you want the full breakdown. But I'll say this. He definitely shows you that Coach Penny Hardaway, regardless of what you want to say about this season, regardless of what you want to say about seasons past, regardless of what you want to say about things he does in the media, how he handles players, how he addresses players, how he doesn't address players, his rotations – Whatever you want to say, I made all the jokes about Malco and all those type of things this year, right? No matter what you say, Penny can still get in front right. of any kid in the country mm -hmm. and sell this program at a top level. That's, that's all I got. That's there is, I, there is, is one thing. They if said, you ever question Penny Hardaway, go look at the news today. Shamaria, right. they said this in a game um, a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the guys was like, you know, Penny's still learning, man. He's still learning. I know one coach. thing he ain't learning. One thing he ain't learning is how to win program. the freaking offseason. Yep. Man. Like, man. This dude does not yep. stop. Yep. Uh, it seems like it's going to be another big offseason, man. Some it of the names have been be. thrown around. And it seems like, I don't know, this is just fans just kind of manifesting this on Penny, but it feels like. This is going to be a year where you got Haggerty. You maybe get a David Jones back. Hopefully. And you just kind of surround mm -hmm. those guys with, you know, shooters, role players, right. defenders, rebounders. Guys who want to play for the city, man. That's I should have asked Sandy. Sandy, <laughs> what type of player is a, is a guy that plays for the city? That's what I should have asked. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of guy do the rebounders want to see playing for the city? <laughs> 
for sure, man. At that term, <laughs> got on my nerves so bad playing for the city. And then UConn has got a kid who actually is playing. I remember, remember I joked about that kid. I said, does UConn have a kid who's playing yeah, for the city? Yeah, UConn. And ain't nobody care about stores. <laughs> Donovan Klingland is from Donovan Klingland is from uh, liquor, yeah. literally uh, from Bristol. Connecticut. Literally from Bristol. Whatever. <laughs> anyway. Scratch that. <laughs> Number three. Uh, I was a little annoyed uh, last night, Samaria. Mm-hmm. Um News came out that John Morant is switching agencies, that he's going to uh, leave uh, Tanner and he's going to go to, we don't know. We don't. As, yeah. For right now, we don't right. know, right? And uh, Memphis, you were Memphis and born and raised. You've moved a little bit outside of Memphis at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, can we get people to combine, combine travel five hours today to get to I know. <laughs> find two guests today? But yeah, yeah. but yeah, a um, lot of people, you, you know Memphis, right? Born mm-hmm. and raised, you know Memphis. The sky is falling, chicken little mentality, you know, waiting for the other shoe to fall. Oh, man, Josh getting ready to go to clutch. Yeah. So means Josh getting ready to go play with LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> Here's breaking news. LeBron James is 40 years old. Right. <laughs> I, bet, right. I doubt anybody in the league is, like, planning, like, hey, I need to get to I L.A. to get to, to LeBron. LA to play yes. with LeBron. That's, yeah. and, and the whole clutch sports thing, first of all, I don't think Josh is going to clutch sports because there's – a lot of people say clutch because they really can't name another agency. They just know oh, clutch sure. sports, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like a lot of people are worried about the whole clutch thing. If you look at the NBA, there's about 30, 40 guys to play for clutch sports, right? Yeah. There's only 15 players on the team. Those guys play for some everybody. Like yeah. there are guys all over the NBA that are clutch sports. Two of them play for the Memphis Grizzlies. Vince Williams signed a very team-friendly contract. Mm-hmm. Where he, if, if there was going to be some haggling going on, they really could have finessed with Vince Williams. Did not happen. Signed a very team-friendly contract. Um Scotty Pippen Jr. is on a two-way. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give y'all news of what happens. Scotty Pippen Jr. will not be on a regular contract next year. He's going to be on a two-way. It, 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 he might not be with the Grizzlies, but the Grizzlies are not going to – he's not going to be on a regular contract. They're, they're, so that's mm-hmm. – I'm not saying that's news. I'm just predicting that's not oh, going to happen. Okay. Uh, I, I doubt very seriously the, that, that, that uh, the clutch mm-hmm. sports is going to, like, demand or force Boy. Scotty Pippen Jr. to be on the, on, on the deal here, right? Mm-hmm. So – or he's I'm, going to play with LeBron. Or gotta go play. It was, I guess what he was playing with LeBron. And they cut his ass. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I don't. I think the whole thing because if you look at it, that whole persona was born with the Anthony Davis thing, right? LeBron yeah. goes to to the Lakers. He's got his eyes on AD, who's a clutch guy. Mm-hmm. He gets traded to the Lakers, but he, it wasn't a giveaway trade. There was a lot that left the Lakers mm-hmm. from that trade, right? A lot. And um, but other than that, there hasn't any been any. Uh, clutch sports forcing the hand of teams to right. send players wherever they want to go. Damian Lillard, I believe, is a clutch athlete, right? I, I'm I not think he is. Sure. And he got yeah. out of Portland, and guess where he went? He did not go to Miami. No. He went where Portland wanted him to go right. and where they got the best return from Exactly in Milwaukee. So um, I think all those things are just huge misnomers. It's, it's just all fantasy talk um, for sure. But something else we talked about off the air, Grizzlies related, is uh, – because, I mean, f- before I go there – the NBA has just changed, man. Guys aren't – the Grizzlies are a competent organization who has a – they're a very talented team. If Ja leaves the Grizzlies, he's leaving to go to a situation where he feels like he can win in, right? Right, exactly. In a couple of years, LeBron James is going to be gone. Anthony Davis is going to be 30-something years old. Mm-hmm. Why does he want to go to any market? Do, like, and, right. and it's like it's, – it's even harder to even make those type of trades nowadays, too, because right. teams value small – Contract, so it's going to be hard to move a guy like you know, exactly. those. Those big contracts are just way hard to move now than they used to be. But uh, something else very interesting <laughs> that we noticed uh, during the uh, during the break is Jaron Jackson Jr. Right, Jaron oh. had, Jaron had forty the other night, <laughs> thirty five the other night, and he also well, hit his sixty fifth game. Yeah, Kenny Stubblefield is- last night, which makes him eligible for all like, postseason exactly. awards. All defensive teams, all those mm-hmm. types of See you next year, Jaren. Yeah, we'll see you next year, Jaren, yeah. because <laughs> the injury report came out today. It is like left quad, yeah, quadruple so like, uh, tendonitis or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's been real. It's been real, yeah. Jaren. Right, fifth metatarsal. Right, exactly. Toenail uh, clipping. Toenail clipping. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Gout. He's got, he's got the gout. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ingrown and the dog got worms. It's, it's, it's all that Jaren Jackson Jr. has. The dog ate his homework, something like that. Yeah, but Jaren, like I said, that Mark Gasol documentary, Really made me give it a, have an appreciation for what Mark did back then, and also what Jaren's doing now, mm-hmm. playing like this in a, in a in just a crap season for sure. Crap but season. yeah, man. But uh, that's the three pointer, uh, Kenny Stubblefield. My special guest, Shamaria Wiseman, who's going to be doing great things in the city of Memphis. And will she's a member of a silent media group, and more importantly, she's the host of Mario Knows Best. Best. And you might see her just on some random podcast 
on a Tuesday yeah. night yeah. <laughs> in uh, Idaho or something. <laughs> dude, I looked on YouTube and just see Shabari's face. It's one of the most random. <laughs> like, dude, who are these people? <laughs> like, how did you connect with them? Like, it's just Shabari and like 10 dudes on the screen. <laughs> like, what am I watching, bro? <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> shout out to my homie Shamaria Wiseman. Shamaria, glad you could come out for sure. Where, where can the people find you? Uh, Maria knows best on YouTube. Uh, Maria Maria underscore knows underscore best on mm. TikTok. Twitter Maria W knows best. So those are my socials. Yeah, y'all check her out, man. We're about to take a break. When we come back, inside the same brain here on Anthony Sane Show. Good friend from Boca. Good friend. Dusty May has left Boca at FAU, Boca. And, and now he is coaching at Michigan. Um, is it a good hire by Michigan? Yeah. Did you? I mean, what well, we've, me and Gabe have been beating this drum for a long time now that this was probably going to happen. Yeah. This was the time for him, and if he didn't jump now, then he could have missed out on his opportunity. You, you to would go. have to either commit to rebuilding at FAU or hightail it, and he chose right. to hightail it. And that was the only decision I think he could have made. When it comes to this year, if you are going ahead and judging them off the fact that they were thirty and three in Conference USA a year ago, and they made it to the Final Four, and they were a top ten preseason team, I think you're rating them from a place that that, where they should, they never should have been yeah, rated that no. high in the first place. No. People need to realize getting to the damn tournament from Florida Atlantic is a win. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at twelve p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. After three entire, I think he made it through the third one. Yeah, yeah I don't know. He might have left with a quarter left in the third practice. Lou Esposito is gone already. We hardly knew ye. What are you going to do? I'm just proud of him because, you know, his dream was to coach at Memphis, and he hey, got his chance. He had it as a goal. He didn't say coach at Memphis for an entire season. Well, I mean, first of all, when you're getting six times the pay just to go to Michigan, I think you do it. And nobody's going to sit here and blame him. I'm just, it sucks. We thought that that was a great hire. He was coming in. He was a co-defensive coordinator. He'd been a defensive coordinator before the FBS level. You know, you got Jordan, who's in his, really his first year of, yeah. at this level. Obviously, he'd been the D coordinator at UT Martin, but felt like that was a guy that was going to be able to help him out kind of go through his first season at the FBS level as a defensive coordinator. So I feel like it just sucks. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. At Create a Sig, our top priority is to provide the best customer service experience as possible while offering the largest variety of vape supplies, legal THC products, and smoking accessories. Our trained sales associates are here to assist any and all customers to help them find the best products available. With our daily deals, weekend deals, loyalty rewards program, and our punch card program, there are tons of rewards to earn to help our customers save plenty of money along the way. Check out one of Creative Sig's four locations across the greater Memphis area and come visit us. Y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show, sponsored by our good friends at Creative Sig. Four area locations, man, where you can get the Sane Asylum pack, whether you're a nicotine user, a Delta 8 user. Check it out, man. Four area locations. I'm a big fan, like I tell you guys all the time, at the Midtown location, McLean the Poplar. Super intelligent staff over there, uh, Kenny Stubblefield. You can come in as a novice. They'll make you feel like a pro. Make you feel like a uh, make you feel like a marijuana vet up in that joint. Hey, man. I think I got a I got a DM. Mm -hmm. It's actually not McLean and Poplar. It's Madison and McLean. Huh? 
It's Madison and McLean. Madison and McLean. See, I typically go yep. up there hiking. Yep, yep, yep. So here's the problem. Folks been looking for that location. Oh, man. And they can't find it. My bad. It's, it's Madison and McLean. Madison and McLean. That's right. That's right. And you're right. <laughs> that <I think> about. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yep. But yeah, man, check it out. Crazy see it. Do your thing, man. So, um, like I said, get the Santa Silent Pack. If you're a nicotine user, you can get a custom pack for that. If you're a Delta 8 user like myself, you can get a pack for that as well. Um, but, Kenny, I'm going to tell you what's been on my mind, man. And uh, I was I was, I was was pulling on this the other day, which is a nice little sativa uh, <clears throat> vape that I got from Credit Seed. So I was kind of upbeat about things, right? So um, I'm thinking about this post that I saw on Facebook where somebody said, I'm not the type of person who's going to have a grudge against a stranger just because you fell out with them or based on somebody else's opinion. Mm. I said, man, I totally disagree with it. <laughs> like, I'm the type of dude, man, if what about friends? Like, here's the thing. <clears throat> I don't play about the word friend at all, bro. Like, right. if, if, right. if, if you say, if you say, uh, if you're saying you're my friend, if I say you're my friend, it actually means something to me. It means like I've vetted you, I've done research on you, and I've I've got invested time in you, right? Like I've I've done my homework on you, Kenny Stubblefield. You know what I mean? Right. And if if a friend of mine says I don't fool with this particular person, that's all they got to say, bro. That's all I got to hear. Are you a fool with them, or they did you wrong? <laughs> <coughs> I ain't fooling one, bro. It's just that on it. Yeah, here's my water. I thought I had my water somewhere. Right? <laughs> I don't know how you lose that. Thing. Oh yeah, you gotta stay hydrated when you when you when you get in your mind right, man, for sure. <laughs> but um, here's why I say that, Ken. If you're a friend, like the word friend, like I said, I don't play about that word. I don't throw that word around. So, if you're my friend, right, that means that me and you hold each other accountable. Right. I can tell you, Kenny, you're wrong as hell. And you can tell me saying you're wrong. And you've done that. Right. You've done that to me. I've done that to you. And you learn each other. And you learn, okay, well, saying this like this. So let me give this to him in this way. And he'll understand. Or can this this way so I can give this to him and he'll understand. 100%. And because you have that level of rapport with somebody, rapport with somebody, a core. With having that level of, of, of report with them. <laughs> <laughs> you have that level of rapport with them, right? Right. Because you have that level of rapport, and you guys hold each other accountable. And you're not just some weirdo surface level friends. You're really trying to help each other and empower each other and edify each other, right? If I say this person is trash, they're using the same system you use to judge somebody whether they're trash or not. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Or whether they're a good person or not. So I'm not that dude at all, man. And like I but one thing about it is this: like, there have been situations where I've told people I don't mess with this particular person because they cross me, or I think that person's garbage, or whatever. And I see them still be cool with them, right? I can't project how I feel or the way I go about doing things into mm. the way you go about doing things because you may not see it the same way. But it will make me wonder whether you're really my friend or not. Mm. <laughs> because if if I say for a particular reason I don't fool with so-and-so because they did this to me, and I, I see you're still cool with them, maybe we're just not as close or not the type of friend that I thought we were. Mm. Now, I'm not going to feel no way about you, like no serious way, because like I said, I can't make people think the same way that I think. But I'm not that person at all. I totally disagree with that statement. Like if if somebody crossed you, Kenny, like we've had, we've had situations where we talked about this. If somebody crossed, hey, that's all I need to know. Like, that's, that's cool. That's all I need to know. And, mm. it, and there's a person that I've been talking to you about. I say, hey, just give me a minute. I'm, I'm, I ain't got nothing solid to say <laughs> yet, but give me a minute. I'm gonna tell you about it. I'm gonna tell you how you should think about that person, right? And we we literally just wrapped up that conversation, you know. Right. So that's just I think in true friends, but if if you're really true friends, bro, you can step out and say those type of things for sure. Where, where are you at with it? Uh, can I let me let me clarify? Let me ask a clarifying question All right. on this. No, I'm not too clarified right now. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> Thanks to the good people. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sake. Let's go real deep on no. Yeah. Does You better give does, me why you get me, man. Does business, they ain't, they ain't does business stand in the way of any of this? Or what if business and friendship are connected? Um, it's it's kind of the same because yeah. I can I can speak on business stuff. And we've had, we've had, to, in this last 30 minutes, we've had that conversation about a, a couple things, right? Right, right. And because we are true friends, either we see things the same way already, yeah. or I know why you said that. Or, I, okay, when, when you did this, oh, yeah, I know. All right, so 
Yeah. There was he, some stuff going on in here yeah. where you were like, I know why you said what you just said. Mm-hmm. Because, because you I, know yeah. And I, me. I feel, yeah, we were having an off-the-camera off conversation about something else. And yeah, and it's like, yeah, okay, that's why he feels that way. So I think that you can speak on whether it's business or it's personal. You can still have those kind of conversations. Because yeah. I know people who, um, prime example, I'm not going to name the person, but I know someone who was looking to go into business with somebody that I knew. Right. right? And I told him, no, don't go in, go in business with them. And it wasn't because of nothing that directly happened to me. But the people who I knew who were speaking for the, against that person, I had enough equity built in them. Where I was like, no, I'll take their word. And from what I know from him, my little experience with him, no, don't do not do business with him. Yeah. And the dude came back and said, I'm glad I didn't do business with him because I found out this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So – I'm I'm not I'm not that guy at all, bro. Yeah. If if you cross one of my friends, one of my friends says, "Hey, that dude's garbage. Don't fool with him." I ain't fooling with him just because the same because I I know I have built that connection with you. Yeah. So I know you're going through the same process I'm going. It's through. interesting because like, and this is this is it's weird, but I don't have a lot of people that I'm really close to friends wise, right? Like I don't have like I've got people that I'm acquaintances with. I have people that I do business with. But in terms of like friends, uh, man, I I got too much going on in my life to have friends, right? Mm-hmm. And I would consider you one of my friends. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. I think that, like, I, I I know that me and you in the past have had conversations like this, where it's like, you know, this person, I don't fool with this person, and by proxy because we're friends. Mm-hmm. But here's the. I, I say the same thing. I will not fool with that person. But here's the thing, Anthony. Me and you are so alike in a lot of ways mm-hmm. that I didn't even need you to tell me yeah. to not <laughs> not fool with her, fool with this dude. Yeah. Right. Like I had already made up in my mind I wasn't going to. Yeah. But your interactions, your experiences, your situation, clown. It was more so a, a clown. situation where I was like, mm-hmm. well, that's that's it, yeah. right? Like because. Mm-hmm. People can people can sit here and uh, specifically about you, they can say anything they want about you, and they can have their perception of you based mm-hmm. on what they see on camera, on right. Twitter, all that kind of stuff. But you are an extremely perceptive individual when it comes to people, their motives, yep. their their kind of their energy that they put out, what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. Like you have a way of seeing through bullshit that a lot of folks don't Man. see through. So, yeah, bro. Um, so yeah, I, I think that in terms of like specifically. With you specifically, if you tell me I don't fool with that person, it's a wrap. Yeah, you might not make an immediate decision, but it's going to – I'm the same way. If you tell me, man, don't and don't fool with so-and-so, or just kind of like lay breadcrumbs of why I shouldn't fool with a certain person, the same way with you. Like, it, it may not be immediate, but you, you it, it matters to you for sure, and it matters to me too. What's going on, everybody? This is Anthony Sane of the Anthony Sane Show. Here to tell you guys about Creative Sig. Creative Sig is a smoke shop located here locally in the city of Memphis for awesome locations throughout the city. I'm a big fan of the location on Midtown and off McLean and Poplar. Go check them out, y'all. They've got everything you need as far as your nicotine needs, as far as your Delta 8 needs. they got all of that, y'all. Just go check them out. they got the Sane Asylum package, which you can go get. Different varieties of things on the nicotine side and on the Delta A side. Mix those things up. You can come out with a great package. The St. Asylum package is there at Credit Sig. Let me tell y'all some more about Credit Sig, though, guys. Um, they strive to provide top-notch customer service, quality products, large varieties of nicotine, uh, and legal TAC products as well. Customer service, loyalty, and punch card reward programs. They offer fantastic rewards from 50-cent bottles of juice or salt nick disposables to 25% off an entire transaction, all earned by making purchases at any Creative Sig location. The staff members are ready to help you and find the perfect products to get you started on your vaping journey and ensure you have all the knowledge to do it like a pro. Mention code word VAPE901 for a one-time 15% discount off all your entire transactions at Creative Sig. I'm telling y'all, go check them out. Great people, super nice staff. Go get the same asylum package, y'all. I'm telling you, just go get you straight, man. Just go get you right. Go check them out at Creative Seed. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah uh, that's the end of our bromance for the day. <laughs> <laughs> but being for real, man, I'm, I'm using we're using each other for examples. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. I totally disagree with that statement. Like, yeah. if if somebody crosses one of my friends, you might as well cross me, bro, because I ain't fooling with you. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's just that on it. Yeah. But yeah, man. But uh, another good show today. Shout out to Sandy Adams. Shout out to Shamaria Wiseman. 
Thanks to the good people at Creative City. Like I said, four area locations. My favorite location is on Madison and McLean That's in it. Midtown. Go check them out, man. Get the St. Asylum pack. Whether you're a nicotine user, whether you're a Delta user like myself, man, I'm feeling good right now, man. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm energized. I'm ready to go, for sure, man. But uh, we're about to slide up out of here. We'll see you guys next time here on Anthony Sane Show. And we are out. Thank you for listening to the Anthony Sane Show. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next week.